Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's my uh, distinct pre uh, pleasure tonight to uh, invite our guest speaker. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, when I, uh, I came across uh, Dr. Eck, uh, Alita on Facebook, of all places, and was reading about uh, other comments of her, uh, not only that, but uh, I saw the word Piscataway next associated with her name, and uh, I thought to myself, well, there's one of the other five conservatives in Piscataway. <laughs> um, but uh, she, she did con confess to me that that's where she works. And, uh, but uh, it, it's a great privilege for me to have uh, Dr. Reck here today to present before us uh, the topic, her pa uh, passion of hers that she and her husband have been working on about alternative ways to approach uh, the health crisis in this country. And so what I will do is I will pass the floor over to Dr. Eck and welcome her to our organization. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, just by quick introduction, who I am, I'm a private practicing physician with my husband in Piscataway, and we've been there since 1988. I'm internal medicine, he does family medicine, and we just got started, and early on, didn't like to have these other third parties telling us what to do. So we didn't want to get involved with the HMOs, we just thought that that was not a good way to go. Um, Medicaid system was, was terrible in that um, the government would underpay us dramatically, like maybe pay a fifth of what it would cost to provide the care, and you get that six months later. So early on, we didn't want to get involved with the Medicaid system, but yet we did feel an obligation to take care of the poor. And that's what got us thinking, how was a good way to do it? We um, had read a book by Marvin Olasky um, called The Tragedy of American Compassion. And it talks about the Medicaid system. It talks about the way when you get real bureaucratic taking care of the poor, when government tries to do it, it's just a matter of signing up papers and having people fill out forms. And it's not a human interaction the way it ought to be. So we thought, why don't we just try to um, set up some kind of a clinic to take care of the poor? And we did that. Zarafath is uh, a church in the middle of central New Jersey. It happens to be on a thousand acres of land that was given to them by a widow a hundred years ago and because uh, she couldn't pay her taxes. And uh, this land was then used by this small church group to set up a radio station and a school and a church. The only problem was it was right on the Raritan River and in 1999 it flooded. Hurricane Floyd came through and we had a horrible flood. There was a little building though in the corner of the property that had been a residence, they, they got moved out, they were under 14 feet of water. But when everything dried out, we looked at that little building and said, why don't we set up a clinic? So volunteers came out of the woodwork to set up this clinic. And um, by the time we got it opened and it was ready to go, 2003, it was debt free because people just gave the donations and then other people just gave of their time and their skills and it was started. That's why we don't have any mortgage to pay. Uh, the church gives us the, doesn't charge us rent. We get all kinds of help. And it winds up that it only costs us $13 per patient visit. Everybody volunteers. And I can just tell you story after story about really how uplifting it is. When a person comes and they're, they're scared and they're poor, they have no money, they're sick, they don't feel good, they might be a single mother. They might have been uh, poor because of reasons that, um, they made bad choices, they got involved with alcohol, they got involved with drugs, or something like that. Um, some of them just lose their jobs and then they're scared. They don't have any insurance, they have no money. Um, the unemployment office sends us patients, the judge sends us patients, the parole officer sends us patients. Um, psychiatric hospitals, when the people are discharged, they're given prescriptions for something that might cost $400. They have no money, They've, where are they going to get that? They come to us. And um, it's just amazing how we're able to, to help, help these people. We'll see diabetics and we'll see people with hypertension and um, we'll, we see regulars, but they kind of get to know us. They, they know that this is where they can go when they're sick. And it keeps people out of the emergency room. I got called down to um, testify at a health subcommittee uh, in May and Bernie Sanders was on the one side and Rand Paul was on the other side. You couldn't have two polar opposites. And I told the story of the clinic and how we keep people out of the emergency room. That was the purpose, how to keep the non-urgent 
cases out of the emergency room. So we, um, I explained it. I said $13 a patient visit. And the government claims it's $1,000 per patient visit when somebody just shows up in the ER for a sore throat. Mm -hmm. The number one reason a person comes to the emergency room is for a sore throat. Ridiculous. They come to our clinic instead. So we've saved a bundle of money and taken no taxpayer dollars. We would refuse taxpayer dollars. We don't want the strings that come attached with taxpayer dollars. Neither do we think that taxpayers ought to have the money extracted from them to take care of the poor. It ought to be voluntary charity. And that's how we get the funds required. People just give us donations. They give, they write us checks. Um, we have a little donation box. The person comes in and might put a $20 bill in. It pays for more than his visit. And they feel, feel good about it. So it's really the way to take care of charity. Well, that got us to thinking, $1,000 for patient visit. There's a federally qualified health center in the next town over that um, is always complaining they, have, they need more money. And I remember asking the director, how much does it cost to take care of somebody in your clinic? It's $140 per 160 per patient visit is what they claim. And um, I thought, where do they spend their money on? So I started to look, and uh, there's a handout that you're going to get. Or did you get it already? It shows. Look at the back. I looked at their Form 990. This is your tax dollars at work. The Form 990 in, um, I didn't even name it. Well, Plainfield Health Center, I did name it. 2008. Um, they get $5.7 million from Medicaid, $2.3 million in uncompensated care, whatever that is. Um, federal government gives them grants, then they get cash from the patients, they'll try to charge the patients. Miscellaneous income is twice as what our total budget, 123000 Theirs is $14.7 million is what they are bringing in, all tax dollars. Then their expenses, program expenses are $11 million, I don't know. Um, but look at the salaries of the wages, the, the uh, employee benefits. But look down, travel, 113000 um, Depreciation, 410000 all right, that's just a counting thing. Provision for bad debts, 650000 How can there be bad debts when it's a free clinic or you're taking care of the poor? Um, personnel recruitment, 265000 It just goes on and on. Now, all right, they see more patients than us, but not that many more patients than us. And that's where you come down to the 141 to 280 per patient visit, and ours is 13. So I got to thinking about that. And then I looked on the website. Yeah, we give out free medicine. We get all kinds of donations of medicine, and we'll just hand it to the people. Yeah, if, if they need it. And you, you, some people will come, and they'll have like $4 in their pocket. They can't, do a, they can't buy a little bottle of Afrin nasal spray. It's just beyond their ability. They'll look at you and we, just, oh, we got something for you and you go in our little pharmacy and some donated medicine, we'll get it. Or we buy generics and we just give it to them. I thought that was against the law to do that, no? No. No? No, we're doctors. We could do that. Give out medicines? Give out medicines that they, they get from the, um, we'll buy it wholesale. We get it from the pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, the companies will give us the medicines. We get um, samples from the uh, pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. Big evil pharmaceutical. pharmaceutical, they're great. They've got programs for the poor that we help the people to access. They're great at helping. They, they, they're not as heartless as we're led to believe. I looked up Medicaid now. The Medicaid system is something you hear about entitlement reform all the time. Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid. Medicare is what we pay our payroll taxes for, and that's what you get when you turn 65 or you get disabled. Social Security, we know about that. Medicaid is what you get when you're poor. So in other words, you become entitled to something because you failed. It kind of goes against what, what we ought to be thinking of as an entitlement. And um, not to disparage the poor, the, the, the people are poor for very, very many different reasons. A lot of them are truly sick. They're just in big trouble. But others scam the system, and they really do scam the system. Um, they'll magnify their symptoms, my back and the, whatever, and they'll bring in reports. And I don't know if, if, if it's real because then you go out and you see that they're sort of living a pretty regular life out there. And others, um, there's, there's uh, the, the mothers of 
single moms, tough situation. That can be for many different reasons. It's just that there's so many of them. And in fact, in New Jersey, one, point, one per seven people is on Medicaid. One in seven. That's a huge number of people. That's supposed to be a safety net. It's not supposed to be something that everybody aspires to get onto. And Obama wants everybody on it. He's pretty well said that. Okay. Um, I looked at some of the statistics. You can go to statehealthfacts.org. It tells you about all the medical programs in each state. So New Jersey, our total Medicaid budget is $10.7 billion with a B. Our whole state budget is $28 billion. So it's huge is what we spend on Medicaid. Where does the money go? Half of it goes to uh, nursing homes for the elder care. And I'm going to leave that aside for this point. That's a whole other topic. But half of it, roughly um, $5.4 billion, is going for acute care. And those are people that are younger than um, the elderly. And it's, a, it's the children on welfare, and it's um, the disabled, or not the disabled, um, alcoholics get on Medicaid. Um, it's just the Medicaid system for the younger group. Acute care. A hundred million, nine hundred million goes to hospitals, seven hundred million goes to other services, five hundred million goes to prescriptions and this thing. And half of that acute care money, I'm trying to, I just want you to see, understand these numbers. Half of that goes to Medicaid managed care. Medicaid managed care. What we're doing is we're taking a pot of money, we're handing it to an insurance company. And they're really excited to sign more and more people up, especially well people. Because you take a family of four, you hand $20,000 to a Medicaid managed care company for a healthy family of four. And that's charity, and that's coming out of the taxpayers. And it's paying for nothing because these people are well. So manage, the Medicaid managed care system is, is a huge money pit. They call it mining for Medicaid gold. The managed care companies are thrilled to get Medicaid patients. Um, and if you, if you figure 20% goes to administration, that means that 500 million is going to administrators of the Medicaid, managed care and the federally <laughs> qualified health centers. You know how much doctors get in the whole ma Medicaid system? 90 million. 1.9% of the entire Medicaid budget pays doctors, labs, and x-rays. So doctors aren't getting paid. That got us to thinking, why don't we set up a system, and that's why I have this card, and this is where we need your help, the Middlesex County um, Tea Party. I've, got, I've talked to the Tea Party in Sussex County, I've talked to some of the, other, talked to some of the others, and um, the New Jersey AAPS.org is our website, and we have concocted the idea called the New Jersey Physicians Volunteer Act. What we're going to say is if physicians donate four hours a week to a clinic such as ours, donate, no pay, no CPT codes, no all of the, the tremendous amount of paperwork, just a chart, take care of the person, send them on their way like we do. Very, very efficient. Four hours a week. We're going to ask the state to give us medical malpractice coverage for our whole practice. You might think, oh, wow, that's a lot of money. When you analyze it, it's not that much. Remember, we're spending $10 billion on Medicaid. The total amount given out in malpractice payments last year was $200 million. And now um, there will not be the, the um, defensible lawsuits. That go, I don't call them frivolous anymore because everybody's problem is important. But defensible. I mean, in other words, the doctor really can prove he didn't do anything wrong. Those lawsuits will disappear. Because now, if somebody has a claim, they're going to bring it to the state instead of a malpractice insurance company. So $200 million compared to $10 billion. $200 million is the worst it would, cut would be. The state would save a bundle. About eight legislators have looked at this and have said, great idea. Yeah. And the, the, um, it takes a long time, though. I don't know. Yeah. It's like making sausage. It's just, it just takes a long time. For them to Christy. put laws together. Christy knows about it. Knows about it. And um, they're working on drafting a law. It's relatively simple. Here's why it's so simple. For what we do in our free clinic, 
we get free malpractice coverage by the federal government. Federal Tort Claims Act, it's called. They consider us part of the public health service. So we go and volunteer. We're covered. Nice. But then we come back and we go into our regular practice where we have to earn a living, and there we have to write this nice big check every three months. Mm -hmm. 